today's show, the Harley Davidson Livewire finally gets launched. The UK looks to mandate electric car charging infrastructure in every new home. And as we celebrate 50 years since Apollo 11, everyone goes a little moon crazy. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. It's episode 99 of Ecotech. Next week we hit the big century, so if you have any ideas on how we can celebrate, please do let us know in the comments below. In keeping with what has become a pretty common practice, Tesla has yet again made some tweaks to its vehicle lineup. The good news is a price drop for the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, something I think hints that it will soon become Tesla's entry-level Model 3, on or off menu. But at the same time, Tesla has completely nixed the rear-wheel drive Model 3 along with the Standard Range Model S and Standard Range Model X. At the other end of the price range, ludicrous mode now becomes standard fit for Model S and Model X performance variants. After a pretty long wait, Harley-Davidson has officially launched its Livewire electric motorcycle, with a special launch event here in our hometown of Portland, Oregon. Priced from just shy of US dollars the all-electric hog won't be cheap, but it does manage to pack a 15.5 kilowatt hour battery pack and a combined MIC test range of 152 kilometers. CCS quick charging does come as standard, but the bike's 1.4 kilowatt onboard charger is its biggest letdown. I'm hoping that I'll get a chance to ride one very soon, so watch this space. What if batteries could be made using the same technique that is used to make computer microchips as powerful as they are? Well, it turns out they can. Enter XNG, a Washington state company that does just that, etching a 20 by 20 micron honeycomb structure into the silicon wafer. Millions of micro batteries are made that work together to form a much larger battery with 70 times the surface area of a traditional lithium ion battery. It hit the headlines this week when Canadian startup Cross Border Energy announced it will be using this technology to bring rack mounted grid storage products to market. As I'm sure many of you will know, Tesla has been hard at work building Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai, China. This week, a Morgan Stanley analyst who visited the facility recently suggested that Tesla could be ready to produce Model 3 cars there as early as November this year. There is, however, a catch. Production isn't likely to be from raw materials, but at that point, completely knocked down kits or CKD. It's a fairly common thing in the auto industry and basically means that vehicles will be made using parts shipped to the factory from elsewhere, eliminating the need for stamping and parts manufacturing on site. The UK government wants you to plug in. In a move which is aimed to help it meet its emissions reduction and climate change targets, the UK has unveiled plans to require all new-built homes have dedicated electric car charging stations, at least if they have a dedicated parking space. It also wants to require all high-power charging stations to take debit or credit card payments by spring next year. The fly in the ointment, many new-build housing developments in the UK today don't have dedicated parking for residents so they may not fall under this new proposed regulation. School may be out for the summer, but the California Energy Commission has just awarded nearly 70 million US dollars to help remove smelly diesel school buses from the state's roads. Instead, it's replacing them with all electric models. Called the School Bus Replacement Program, the Energy Commission has provided more than 94 million US dollars in total to date to help fund new school buses in 26 Californian counties. The majority of the funds have gone to low-income, disadvantaged areas, where air pollution is traditionally the worst. Eastern European Tesla fans rejoice! Tesla has started to roll out Tesla service centers and supercharger coverage across the region, and, according to Elon Musk, will be doing so as quickly as possible. 
The first Polish Tesla service center opened this week, and while Twitter was full of happy Eastern Europeans celebrating in the news, it also led to several replies from Tesla fans in other parts of the world who are feeling left out. Which got me thinking, where would you like to see more Tesla sales, service, and charging locations? Let me know in the comments. Today, 50 years ago, humans walked on the moon for the first time, and that's led to several moon-related things from the EV world. This included Volkswagen, who launched a new ad in which it likened its push towards electric cars as being like a moonshot goal. It's nice to see the lunar program being paid homage to, and the whole idea of unifying the world towards a singular goal, electrification and reduction of emissions, is one that we should all be focusing on. But this ad also comes across as a little tone deaf, considering that it's from Volkswagen, a company which is close to, but hasn't yet launched its first long range electric car. Toyota is keen on cashing in on the lunar theme too, reiterating this week the plans it announced early this year to put a hydrogen fuel cell lunar rover on the moon in 10 years time. Working alongside the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA for short, Toyota has published preliminary renderings of a three-axle, six-wheel, all-wheel drive lunar vehicle. That said, it does look more like something out of the Martian than it does the previous lunar rover, and Toyota admits that there are so many technical requirements that it must meet in order for that vehicle to get to the moon that the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle that actually goes there may look very different. It is never fun losing someone close to us, and it's an often tough challenge trying to turn tragedy into positivity. For one Canadian, though, the passing of his wife at the hands of cancer has become a stepping point for a long cross-country road trip in his brand new Audi e-tron SUV. Rather than just travel coast to coast, Harvey Soicher is raising money along the way for his wife's favourite charity, VHG and UBC Hospital Foundation. It helped save his wife's life many years ago when she had a brain aneurysm. And now Harvey is paying it forward. You can donate to his road trip by following the show note link below. And finally, people often complain that they don't have anywhere to park a car, electric or otherwise, let alone charge it. But an Estonian company may have the ultimate solution to both problems. Meet the Nobe 100, a small three-wheeled retro-styled EV that actually debuted back at the Geneva Motor Show, but which just became the subject of a new Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign this week. It's got a top speed of 130 kilometers per hour and has a range of up to 260 kilometers. Apparently as well, it can be stored on the wall. At least, that's if you opt for the wall mounting kit the company has supposedly designed. Electric cars, literally up the wall. And on that note, I'm gonna say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show and if you've got some feedback, please do send it our way. Make sure that you also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when we publish our next episode. And while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is so easy and to make the change, you'll be helping New Zealand towards a zero emissions future. Thanks as always for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time!